And hello, peeps. It is 7 o'clock, and so we're going to start another stream of Unhindered by Coding. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And I just had a question from someone else asking how to join the stream over on the Discord. Am I going to be able to answer that quickly? That's a great question. Uh, let's see. Twitch.tv Nick McPhee. So hopefully that'll let that person join in. And that'll be cool. Um, so uh, we'll be here for the next two hours uh, working on evolution of computation in Rust. And it'll be fun and exciting. Um, the main thing, um, I totally understand it, Sitsu. I hope you're feeling better. I hope that you get some rest because it will help you feel better and be healthy. And we want that. So take off whenever you need to take off. If you're really bored, you can watch the um, video later. I'll have it posted, hopefully tonight, on YouTube. Um, the goal here today... So when we last met to do this was like three weeks ago um, before I took off on vacation. And um, I we had implemented lexicase selection, which I'll say a little bit more about in a second. And the implementation was slow, much slower than I had expected. And so a fair bit of thought and uh, poking about has gone on since then. And tonight the plan is to look at the original implementation, a new implementation, and then probably to make two more implementations and then do some benchmarking, which may ha mostly happen offline because the benchmarking can be a little slow um, if it's very comprehensive. Uh, and we, you probably don't want to sit here and watch me watch my computer benchmark. Um, but I'm hoping we'll get a couple of more implementations in uh, and get some sense of how things are going. Um, and if there's time at the end, we might actually sort of run away from Rust for a second and think about how we might do the same. Uh, if we find something that works well, I kind of think we will, but we'll see. Then there's a question of how could you do the same thing in Clojure? So most of my research work has historically been in Clojure. Um, uh, and well, in recent years has been in Clojure. Um, and uh, I still have a lot of colleagues that are working in Clojure and really like it and aren't gonna probably wanna switch to Rust. Now, there are some options. Um, I could try to figure out how to do interop between Clojure and Rust, which is really between Java and Rust, um, and uh, provide some Rust tools that they could call from Clojure. That's a possibility. Um, but it'd be nice if the basic idea could be carried over to um, Clojure, but I'm not quite sure what that would look like. Um, so might poke at that depending on how long the other things take. And the other things always take longer than I thought they were going to, so don't really know if we're going to get there, but we'll see. Um, so let's look at where we uh, left off. Um, so there, this is a, uh, a very nice article. I'll put a link here in the chat. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about um, Lexicase, now this is this is not an introduction to Lex, Lexicase. There there are some good introductions. Um, in fact, Bill Lacava, the article author of this article, and Tom Helmuth, who's the article of the the first author of the article that this blog post is about. Um, Bill Lacava is also a co-author on that article. Um, the two of them together have done a couple of whoa that wasn't what I meant to do. A couple of tutorials on Lexicase at some of the large evolution computation conferences. Um, 
And if you go to the ACM Digital Library and do some searching, you could almost certainly find it. Um, if you're having trouble finding it, holler and I can fish up a copy of their slides. And it's a it's a good introduction to Lux Case if you're interested in getting into the weeds. We don't need to be in the weeds for what we're doing today, but I figured I'd give you the um, link. And this is a nice blog post that uh, talks about the runtime properties of Lexicase selection. Um, Lexicase has been very successful in the sense that when people use it, they are able to evolve the things that they're looking for more effectively. Um, they're more likely to get good results um, from a, like, can I evolve the thing I want sort of perspective. Um, but it is slow. Uh, and um, this article uh, that this blog post summarizes uh, in a nice way indicates that it's not as, in practice, it's not as slow as the kind of naive worst case scenario might suggest, but it's still not fast by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and we're going to keep using it because it is has good properties, but if we can speed it up, that would also be good. And I'm afraid the, the at least in closure, the standard, standard implementations that I'm familiar with are not very efficient and I think could be improved a lot. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to start this with in Rust uh, because I want to see kind of what we can do there. Um, and I think Rust forces us to think about memory management in particular a lot more carefully than we would in Clojure where it's very easy to just generate piles of memory that then the garbage collector has to clean up. Um, so, uh, this, what, one of the reasons I went here, other than the fact that it's a nice blog post is there's this nice, uh, example pseudocode of how Lexicase works, um, that highlights some of the problems, um, that I think most implementations have, um, and that I'm hoping we can do something about. So, um, the idea is that you have a population, and that's what Bill is calling individuals here. So you have a collection of individuals, a population. Um, so these are all possible solutions to your problem. And they all have a set of errors attached to them. So there is a set of test cases, essentially, and each individual, each solution is run on each of those test cases and gets an error, like how well did it do? So this is not unlike a person taking an exam and the exam's got 100 questions and you get a score, say zero to five on each of those questions. And so you're, what um, Bill's calling error vector here would just be a list of those scores. And in this universe, they're, they're thinking of uh, they're trying to minimize errors. So this uh, error vector, if you were perfect on the exam, this error vector would be all zeros. You didn't have any errors on any of the test cases. Um, and what we're trying to do is pick out of this population, maybe we got a thousand individuals, pick an individual that is good in some sense to be a parent in the next generation. And this is actually a much more complicated question than one might think, because again, if you've got say a hundred errors, you could do something like just add up the errors and say, okay, we'll use that to measure who's best. But that is problematic in various ways. Um, uh, if, let's say there's some really nasty penalty, if I leave a question blank, instead of getting an error of, five, I get an error of like a thousand. Now I might be perfect on 99 of the problems, but I leave one of them blank and all of a sudden I've got a total error of a thousand. But I was really good everywhere but one. Like that is really not choosing me ever seems bad in that circumstance. Um, another issue is I might be really good at French and I'm and maybe the first 
third of the exam is on French. And I was really good at that. But I really stink at philosophy and physics, which were the other two thirds of the exam. So I've got a pretty poor overall score, but I was really good on French. I aced it. I actually don't know any French. So this is very unlikely for me as a human being, but whatever. Um, if other people, especially if other people aren't good at French, it would be good to choose me occasionally. I have skills that the community would find valuable, um, even if I'm terrible at some other things, which is true for most of us, right? We have some skills. We're not great at other things. You need a village to, you know, raise a child, whatever. Um, uh, so... <laughs> One of the things that's good about Lexicase is it does a good job of selecting individuals that have some specific, some skills that have value in the overall sense of the world, but not necessarily always focusing on people that are kind of mediocre everywhere, but not very good anywhere. Um, and so how does that work? So we loop over, so we shuffle, so we randomize the test cases. Um, and we loop over the test cases. So this is like randomizing the, the problems on the exam. So everybody's taking the exam. We have all their scores. We randomize the, 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 the numbers of the exercises. Um, so instead of going through the exercises, number uh, one, two, three, four to 100, we might do seven, 48, 92, 53, right? So we're going to hop around in the exam. And that's what this shuffle does. It says what we're going to, it shuffles the exercises on the exam. So we'll hop around and then we'll loop over all of those. And um, if the number of remaining individuals is less than or equal to one, we're done. We've whittled the population down from a thousand to one really should never be less than one. I don't know quite why he's got less than one here, but because um, you should always have at least one left. But we've whittled from a thousand down to one, and that one, it's the winner. Go that individual. Um, and so we'll quit. Assuming that hasn't happened, assuming individual still has two or more uh, people vying for the slot, we'll get the errors for the for that. Um, test case. So we'll go over every individual that's left in the pot, in the uh, set of candidates at the moment, not from the whole world at the start, but the group that are left at this point. And we will get their, th this particular error. Um, this is the loop. So we'll pull out error 52 for everybody that's left. So we'll find the scores for every of everybody that's left. What's their score on problem 52? We'll figure out what's the best of everybody that's left on problem 52. And then we will keep everybody who has that value. So if let's say the best on problem 52 is an error of two. Nobody did a zero. Nobody did a one. Nobody was perfect on it. Everybody was two or worse. Um, but there are people that are worse than two, we'll ask everybody who's worse than two to please leave the room. You're done. You're not going to be picked. Um, at least not this time. Next time if we start over again with a different shuffling and other people will get picked. And then we keep going. We move on to the next case. Um, if the previous one was 52, maybe we're looking at 37, problem 37 now. We find the all the values for 37, scores for 37 amongst the people that are left, find the best, ask everybody who isn't tied for best, you're out. And then we move on to the next problem. And we keep doing this until we either run through all the problems or we get down to a single individual. If we get down to a single individual, we're done. We return that individual. If we run through all the cases and there are still some people left, two, two or more people left, they have to have had exactly the same error vector. It's the only way you could have two or more of them because um, they tied every time. Um, so we'll just pick a random choice out of that group um, and that will be the parent um, that we choose that time. Now, next time we choose a parent, we're gonna shuffle again. And because we uh, do the problems in different orders, different people can be chosen. If the very first problem is one of those French problems and I aced it, 
that I'm still in the running um, after that first problem. If on the next shuffle, the first problem is some complicated problem about quantum physics that I don't really understand, then I got a big bad error on it because I biffed the problem pretty seriously and I'm going to be asked to leave because other people did better on that problem, we presume. Um, and so there are some shufflings where I might get chosen and other shufflings where I will not get chosen. Um, so this is the basic idea. Um, and that's what we've implemented in Rust. So let's have a look at that. Um, so I called this, I did some renaming and things. I called this simple lexicase. Um, and this is, let's back up a second. This is uh, a method on a population of things of type T. Um, it's actually individuals whose genomes are of type T. And all the stuff we're looking at today, that's just going to be a bit string. Um, uh, later on, we might do more, not tonight, um, like probably weeks, maybe months later on, we might do more complicated things like uh, populations of programs instead of bit strings. But right now, what we have is populations of individuals whose genomes are bit strings, sequences of zeros and ones. Um, and so we've implemented a method on a population. You can say, if you have a population, um, can you... Um, uh, you can, given a population, you can ask for an individual from that population. So if the population is P, you can say P.SimpleXCase, and this will return to you an individual of uh, bit strings, an individual whose genome is bit strings. It actually returns an option um, because... Uh, Actually, I don't remember why we returned an option here. Oh, some of the other selections. Actually, is there really any reason to return options here? I don't remember. I clearly ought to document that um, somewhere. Because we came to the conclusion that returning an option was a good idea somewhere, but I don't remember why that was. Um, and it seems a little odd because the only time, only reason you wouldn't have an individual uh, would be if the population was empty. Um, and if the population's empty, calling selection on it really shouldn't happen anyway. Like that's probably an error and panicking actually isn't an unreasonable option at that point. So I don't remember why. I'd have to look that up. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to put it to do here to remind myself to look into that later. Why are we returning? Ugh, cannot spell. Options for all the selectors. Okay. Um, so simple X case basically is an implementation of what we just looked at, but in Rust. Um, so we're, we have self is the population. Um, and uh, so instead of having individuals as a separate, uh, well, it'll actually become a separate thing in a second, but self is the whole population. It has a field individuals that is the individuals in that population. Bracket zero gives us the first individual. And I'm just grabbing the first individual so that I can get, um, I can find out how many scores there are. Because I need to be able to uh, shuffle the set of indices and um, uh, I don't know magically how many scores there are. Um, so I find it by just grabbing the first individual, grabbing their scores vector, um, and then computing the length of that vector. Um, this should be the same for all the individuals in a population. Um, Recomputing this over and over again every time 
uh, we call Lexicase to get an individual. Um, it's probably not super efficient, which is this to do. I mean, realistically, it's pretty minor. It's certainly not a major part of the cost of um, performing Lexicase selection, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. But you could imagine a universe where um, this num scores, maybe even this vector of case indices was computed when the population was created and stored in a field inside that population um, so that we don't have to redo it over and over and over again. Eh, I'm not... It, that is, I'm quite sure, not the major problem at the moment, so I'm not messing with it right now. But important thing is we figure out how many scores there are, and we create a range from zero to num scores. In Rust, the right-hand um, thing is exclusive, so we do not, uh, so that is zero. If there's 100 scores, that's zero to 99. Um and uh, so we that turns all of this into a vector. So we get a vector of 0 to 99. And then we shuffle it. Um, and pass in uh, this thread's random number generator. Um, and I'm skipping over a lot of the um, rust details, like all the ampersands and the mute um, uh, for the moment, because they're not really the point of what we're working on right now. But if at any point you've got a question about any of that, um, not having any sense of what pe people's different backgrounds uh, with regard to Rust are, I'm absolutely happy to answer questions. So feel free to hop in the chat and be like, well, what the heck is that thing online, whatever, and we'll talk about it. It's a sign of my progress over the past five months now that you know, things that used to be like, what the heck is that? Are now like, oh, I didn't even think about that anymore. So uh, that makes me happy. Then we create the set of candidates. So this is what um, Bill Akava's pseudocode called individuals. Um, and uh, um, we're going to create that set of candidates um, by taking all the individuals, turning that vector into an iterator. Well, actually, yeah, getting an iterator that would iterate over that vector of individuals and collecting. And that gives me a vector of references to individuals. So self.individuals is actual individuals. Um, it is the a, a vector of the actual individuals. And I don't really want to be passing around the individuals because then I would potentially lose ownership or I would have to make copies of them. Um, and this is one of these things that in like Java, you wouldn't think twice about it. Uh, and then you would not have any idea who owned the individual and you could get weird side effects that you didn't expect and bad things would happen. Um, but in Rust, it's like, no, you really have to think about this stuff. Um, and uh, this is an example where we really want candidates to be a vector of references to individuals, pointers to individuals, not the actual individuals themselves, um, because we don't want to take ownership of them. We, we're happy just having, we're never going to need to change any of the individuals. We're just identifying one so we can return it. Um, and so uh, one way to turn a vector of things into a vector of references to things is to pass through an iterator which gives you an iterator of references um, and then collecting all of those back into a vector, um, which seems a little weird. Um, it seems to be the kind of standard way to do it, but um, it strikes me as slightly odd. Um, and it would be nice if there was actually, it would feel kind of rusty to me if there was a, a built-in thingamadoogie that turned a vector of items into a vector of references to items. Um, but as far as I can tell, there isn't one. So um, 
So that's all this does. You can kind of ignore that if you're like Rust confuses me. Um, Because all that's doing is changing types. Now, um, here's where the action is. So for test case index in case indices. So we're looping over all the randomized test case numbers. Um, so this is where we say, let's first look at exercise 29 and then 74 and then 38. Um, and uh, so we'll loop over all the test cases. We're asserting that there is somebody still in the candidates list. Um, that's not strictly necessary, but I'm a little paranoid at the moment, so uh, I've included it. Um, and notice that this also means that the sum kind of doesn't make a lot of sense anymore um, because there should always be a candidate. But um, if the number of candidates is one, we'll break out of the loop because we've we're down we've whittled the group down to one candidate, so that candidate's going to win. So we can leave this for loop and just return them. Um, otherwise, we need to compute the maximum score on this test case. So we iterate over the candidates, call max by key, um, which gives us, um, it, max by key takes a, a function, a closure, um, that says this is how we want to count the max. Um, so here, in mine, we're actually trying to find the highest scores, not the lowest scores. So that's a little different from what Bill had. Um, but we'll not worry about that too much. Um, but for a given individual, this closure is saying, how do we want to decide whether they're good or not? Um, and so we take end individual as an argument. And we say, get the scores vector from individual and get this particular test case. And we'll use that as the value that we'll maximize here. So this gets the maximum score value. Um, we unwrap because max by key might, if, if the population's empty, this would fail. And well, it wouldn't fail, it would return a none. Um, otherwise it returns a sum, wrapping the value. Unwrap just gets rid of that sum. Um, and would fail if there was a none, but we know from this assertion that that can't happen. So this is a safe move. Um, and then that gives us an individual, um, and then we get the scores of that individual, and then we get the test case index. So that's the score on this test case. That's the best score on this test case of anybody in the population. So that's what this does. It finds the highest value score for this test case anywhere in the population. And then we take the candidates, which are a vector, um, and we uh, turn them into an iterator. Um, and we filter uh, for each of those individuals. We see, is there score on this test case equal to the best score. And if it is, we'll keep that individual. Otherwise, we will discard them. So this is keeping everybody who's had the best value. Collect, we'll turn that back into a vector. But in life is good. Um, so that works. Oh, and then after we've done all the test cases, we return. Oh, I don't actually, I don't randomize here. I probably should. Um, so I probably ought to shuffle candidates um, and then return zero. Actually, why don't we just do that? Um, Candidates.shuffle uh, and mute ran thread. And then we'll return candidate zero. Uh, and that means I want to steal this line and put it down here as well. Okay. Now, so what's what what what's the concern? Um, so there are two issues. If we go back to um, two couple of potential issues, um, one is 
that we traverse the vector twice. So notice that we loop over individuals once here, and then we do it again here. And so we end up, if there's a thousand individuals, we go through them once to get the maximum value, and then we go through them again to do the filtering. And that seems meh, probably not terrible, but it doesn't seem great either. Um, it'd be nice to go through uh, only once instead of going through twice. Uh, and that's one of the things that I think we want to look at tonight. Um, the other is we construct a lot of lists and throw them away. Um, so, for example, individuals is a list of individuals, comes in being everybody. But every time we go through this loop, here we're constructing this, this uh, vector of errors finding its min, and at that point, this vector is no longer used and needs to be garbage collected. So we've allocated memory for that vector, and we've garbage collected it. And we're going to do that for every one of the possibly 100 test cases. We also create a vector here of individuals, and we will have to garbage collect that as well, because in the end, we only return a single individual. So every, for every case, we're going to create two vectors in this case, in this setup, and we're going to then garbage collect them both. And that I think is actually pretty expensive. I think we spend, we did a little um, performance testing uh, using the flame graph crate um, three weeks ago. And it suggested that we were spending a lot of time allocating and deallocating memory. Uh, and so that, I think, is certainly one of the big issues. And one thing that's nice, I think nice, um, about um, Rust is that Rust makes this kind of thing easier to see. Um, uh, and so, well, I don't know. Is that really true here? Um Hmm. Do I think it's easier to see that there's a potential memory issue here? Well, it's clear that we had to make this vector of references. It's clear that we still go through it twice because we iterate over it here and then again here. Um... And I guess this is so. So actually, I don't think it's super obvious in in Rust that this is happening. But in this assignment, we are saying that we're going to replace the old value of candidates, the old vector, with this new vector, which means the old value is no longer owned by anybody and will need to be freed. Now, it won't be garbage collected in the same way, but there is going to have to be some memory management that goes on. So we are allocating memory here when we create this vector, and we're deallocating memory here because the old value of that vector is no longer vis uh, accessible. Uh, the fact that we had to explicitly declare this, where's candidates, right here, as mutable is perhaps useful, um, in indicating that something's going on. Um, I guess if you have a mutable vector that you're replacing rather than modifying in place by, say, pushing values onto it, um, that replacement means there's going to have to be allocation and deallocation. So in some sense, it's hinted at here. And in most every language that I've ever worked with, you wouldn't have to say that candidates is mutable. That would be assumed because in almost every language, all things are mutable unless you declare them to not be mutable. Um, uh, or if you go as far as closure, kind of nothing's mutable, but then everything's got to be garbage collected. And so 
the memory management is definitely an issue here. Um, one of the other things, uh, and we'll actually look at uh, some performance um, graph in, a, in just a second about this. Um, this, so I called this simple lexicase, and that's because it doesn't remove duplicates. There's an alternative approach, which I call lexicase with dupe removal, where we remove duplicate individuals, duplicate by score vector. So any two individuals with the same score vector are, as far as selection is concerned, identical. They might have different ways of getting there, um, but from the standpoint of the exam score, they're exactly the same and therefore equally likely to be chosen. So uh, some approaches to some implementations of Lexicase out there actually go through and remove all duplicates at the front um, to see uh, to we don't have to deal with them. Um, and we can do that in Rust with the unique by. Um, uh, I have not heard of William Weddle SCP-7000. No idea what that is. Um, uh, but I would love to hear about it. Um, so this, this unique by says, basically, we're going to go over all the individuals and we'll use their score vector as the way of deciding if two of them are different or not. Um, and, uh, oh, I have posted many Creative Commons photos. I have not been good about that for the past decade, probably. Um, but I used to post a lot of stuff on Flickr. Um, and, uh, oh, that's interesting. Well, I will have to look at that. Um, yeah, thank you. It's always cool to hear when pictures of mine have turned up somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, I've had photographs used in a lot of places. And some people reach out and ask. And a lot of people, because I've, you know, Creative Commons licensed them, nobody has to ask. Um, but sometimes people do. And it's kind of cool to know. So thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Um uh, yeah, so this, um, if two individuals have the same score vector, we'll, um, remove all but one. And I think unique by keeps the first one. Um, uh, the first item encountered is the item retained. If we wanted to be a little fancier about this, we would probably want to shuffle somewhere, um, uh, so that, uh, we're not necessarily going to get the same, uh, th there's not an advantage to being first. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. Now that's not going to show up in the runtime performance. That's really a matter of the evolutionary performance and it's not worrying me any. So I was curious, like, okay, do we want this? unique by does it you know matter um, from a performance perspective and so one of the things I did is I added some lexicase benchmarks um, uh, where we have and I'm not going to go over the gory details here but um, this is using a crate called criterion and we're basically comparing simple lexicase and lexicase with dupe removal on a bunch of different populations to see hey, What's the performance? And if we do that, we get, um, actually one of the criterion, one of the nice things is it builds these very nice HTML reports with pictures and stuff all automatically, which is very cool. It's impossible to read this text here. I mean, I can only barely read it. And I'm, unless you've got a very big monitor, you almost certainly can't read it. Um, but what this is saying, the, the X axis is time. So how long did it take to run a single lexicase selection? And this is all these different population structures because I think it matters. The different whether you remove the duplicates or not depends. Whether that's going to win depends a lot on how many duplicates there are. So I wanted to look at a bunch of different um, 
population structures to see uh, what that would look like. Um, and uh, we can see that some are very, very fast. Some are kind of midland uh, and actually then sort of trail out to here. In some ways, these guys are the end of a curve that starts here. And these guys also um, are in some ways part of this curve. Um, and what matters is that, and this is the thing you probably can't read at all, is these fast ones are all attached to simple lexicase. So this is simple lexicase on a completely random population. So all thousand individuals are different. Um, this is simple X case when there are 10 different values. Um, so there'd be, so the population size is a hundred. So there'd be, I mean a thousand, sorry. So there'd be a hundred of type A and a hundred of type B and a hundred of type C for 10 different types. And this is 20 different types, 25 different types, 40, 50, 100, 200, 500, and 1,000. And these are all simple X case that does not remove duplicates. And they are all quite a bit faster than their counterparts that do remove duplicates. So this is um, where this was simple on a random population. This is simple on, uh, I mean, removing duplicates on a random population, much worse. These guys are removing duplicates on 10 groups, 20 groups, 25 groups, et cetera. Um, and it gets worse when we're removing um, duplicates. If we uh, don't, if we remove duplicates and there are 500 individuals, this is much worse than this. And if we remove duplicates and there are 1,000 individuals, this is way worse than that. The only place where simple loses um, is this guy right here. That is simple on a uniform population. So every individual is exactly the same. And this is duplicate removal for uniform where everybody's the same. So here, simple loses because uniform, if everyone's the same, that unique call turns a thousand individuals into one individual, boom. And then there is no lexicase because one of the very first things that happens in the loop is, are we down to one individual? And the answer is now yes, and we are done. We just leave. So simple, the cost, uh, I mean, uh, removing duplicates, the cost of uniquifying uh, is still high, but it's way better than having to look at everybody. Um, and so here, simple wins uh, or loses over um, removing duplicates. Whereas everywhere else, um, simple is uh, definitely faster. Even here where we have, um, hang on, that doesn't make sense. Doodly doodly do. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I would have thought. Oh yeah, okay. Here. Oh. There are a thousand groups of size one. That should be the same as uniform. But simple is still way better. Well. Oh no no no. That's a thousand groups of size one, so that's the same as random. Yeah, so this should match that and it does, and this should match that and it does. So um yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um so if there's even ten um uh only 10 different types of individuals and 100 copies of each one of them, you would think that uniquifying would really win there, but simple is still substantially faster than uniquifying. So I don't think uniquifying is a win at all. 
Um, and I'm having conversations with some of my research colleagues about that. And we'll see where that ends up. But that is enough background noise. Let's actually try to write some code, um, since that seems to be the point of the exercise. Um, in, in particular, let's see if we can avoid the, um, oops, I don't want to be over here. I want to be here. Let's see if we can avoid iterating twice. And my model for this is actually going to be this bit of code. This is C++ code. So Bill Lacava's implementation of all of this has been in C++ historically. Um, and uh, I was looking at his implementation because I, I had a dim memory that he had done some things differently than the closure people had. And there's actually sort of some nice features here. Um, and in particular, so he has um, a winner which is a vector of current candidates, basically. And he's looping, this is where he loops over all the test cases um, uh, that this h less than case order dot size is basically, you know, while h starts at zero and while it's here, we're gonna go through the test cases. Um, and this pass, his, his implementation is a lot more complicated because he's got a lot of extra features that we are totally not thinking about. Um, but his pass basically allows him to avoid the break call that we have. Um, and um, the important piece is basically here. Um, we're going to... Uh, loop over all the individuals in the pool. So the pool is the set of current candidates and winner is where we're gonna put the candidates that get to move on to the next time. And uh, if the individual J in the pool, in the population, if their error is less than um, the current best fitness, which is what this min fit thing is doing, then we set min fit to be that individual's error. We resize winner to zero, and then we push that individual on. Otherwise, we keep pushing that individual on. Uh, or otherwise, we push that individual on if it's equal to. So if it's less than, we found a new best, and we're going to um, set our best, our min fit to be the value we found, reset the vector to zero, and then start pushing things onto that. And this avoids passing through twice. We don't go through once to figure out what the smallest value was, and then once to put all of those individuals on the list. Here we find the smallest and maintain the list in one loop. Um, and so a question is, is that really what's, is that an important difference? Um, or is the cost of going through the loop twice really not a big deal? Um, so that's sort of the, the, the question that this raises. Um, and so if we have a new one, we kind of reset everything. Otherwise, we just push this guy back on, or onto that vector. One thing that isn't clear to me, and this is partly because I don't, I'm not an expert on C++, is winner, which is declared up here a ways, it's, oh, right here, is a vector of int um, in C++. And so I think, this is an array backed data structure, I think. And that um, when we resize to zero, I'm guessing, I have not taken the time to figure this out, but I think if you imagine an array and you just keep track of how many of the slots are actually being used, 
Reef size zero just sets that number back to zero, saying, hey, no, there's nobody here, but doesn't bother deallocating any memory or erasing any of the previously existing individuals. Um, it just moves, an, a, it just sets an integer to zero and doesn't do any cleaning. And if that's true, then this is much more efficient or p potentially more efficient um, in its use of memory because we're not going to have to continually allocate a new array to put the winners in. We can reuse the existing array and just move um, point, you know, move a counter back to zero when we need to. Um, whereas in our current setup, we allocate a new array, a new vector over and over again. So this makes, um, oh, this collect here, this makes a new vector um, that's totally different than the old vector. And we will allocate new space for that. And I feel like that is probably not awesome. Um, it's possible also that just the avoiding two passes is the win. So I want to first implement this where we just avoid the two passes, but don't worry about the memory and see what, how that performs. And then we'll, um, do it again, uh, where we actually, um, try to manage the memory in a more sensible way and we'll see what happens. So, uh, let us do that. I'm actually going to be a terrible human being um, because copy and paste is the death of understanding, as one of my colleagues is used to saying and is right um, in many ways. Uh, so I'm going to say, oh, actually, I wanted, I'm going to go with simple because I think the evidence suggests that simple, we don't need to remove the, the duplicates. And so um, I think we're going to use simple as our model, um, and that will, um, so we'll have simple lex case, uh, actually I'm going to just say one pass lex case, one pass lex case. Um, and so what do we have to change? we're trying to avoid this um, max by key followed by this filter. We don't want to have to pass through the list twice. So we want to just do it once. I'm going to first do it with a for loop and then we might think about doing it with reduce instead because um, I think that might be cool and useful. Um, so let's start by saying um, we'll have a uh, mute winners, uh, which is going to be vec new. So we'll just start with that. And then we're going to loop over our candidates. Candidates. And for each candidate, we want to find out, is it better than the best we've seen so far? Or is it um, the same as the best we've seen so far? Or just it's worse than the best we've seen so far and we can ignore it. So actually, one thing I want to do to start with is Bill's code, if we come back here, he has to do this sort of special case if J is zero to push the first individual on. I'm just going to push the first individual on right here. So I'm going to say, uh, instead of vec new, I'm going to say vec bang uh, candidates zero. So I'm going to put the first can first individual. I'm going to declare it the winner so far because that seems reasonable, and then I don't have to worry about um, special casing that first individual. Now to avoid seeing the um, uh, the 
first individual twice. Oh, go away. Oh, no, that's, I see what's going on. Um, I'll do one dot dot, which gives me a slice out of the array, which is everything from index one to the end, um, so that I my loop C will never um, look at candidate zero. It'll start with candidate one. Um, so that simplifies my life a little bit. Um, so now if um, C dot scores um, so what is C? C is a why are you yeah, you guys should work. Um, uh, test case index. Uh, if that is less than um, winners zero dot scores dot uh, bracket test case index. So that's if, if if that's true, the ind our individual C is better than the best we've seen so far. So we need to make it the new uh, chief in charge. So um, that means we need to say, uh, well, let's again not worry about memory management um, and just make a new vector. Um, I think that's going to be inefficient and we'll want to look at that um, as a thing to remove. Uh, but for now, we can just say we'll set vectors to be a new, uh, winners to be a new vector at that point. Um, and then uh, else if c dot scores test case index equals winners zero scores test case index then we want to push c onto the vector of winners so c's score on this test case is the same as the winner's score on this test case. So we will add C to the pool of awesome people that are still under consideration. Now, after we get through that loop, winners ought to be our target. Um, and so we should be able to say just candidates equals winners at that point and get rid of all of this stuff. Uh, and so in theory, that should um, get us uh, where we want to go. Now we've got a compile problem. Considering borrowing here. Um, so the problem is... that what I need? Apparently. Why did I need that? Oh, sure. Because I want a reference to this vector, this slice, not to take ownership of that subarray. I just want to be able to point into it and say, loop over this subset of candidates. Um, without this, I would be taking ownership of that sub slice of candidates array, and that's gonna get me in trouble, um, and isn't what I need. I don't need to reach into that and modify anything in that sub array. I just wanna go through it and look at the individuals that are there. So having a reference is totally reasonable here. and that. Um, without the reference, notice I get this insane type um, inferenced here um, that 
made me a little nervous before, uh, and I just chose to kind of look the other way. But uh, when we put the reference in, then C is a reference to a reference to an individual, which is fine. Um, uh, that'll do what we need. Um, and notice that even though C is a reference to a reference, um, uh, nifty magic in Rust means we can do things like C.scores, and that will kind of reach through both of those references and get us to the scores vector for the individual being pointed at by C. So, voila, we wrote a thing. Um, now the question would be, how does it perform? So let's go over to benchmarks. Now I wanna simplify this a little bit. Um, right now I do a lot of benchmarking um, as we saw in this graph and waiting, having you wait for all of these things to run would not be lots of fun. So I think we're just going to look at um, random uniform and well, let's maybe do a hundred, a uh, hundred different groups um, because I think that probably gives us enough to be useful without uh, tying up your life. So these first, the, this part does random and uniform, um, uh, and we don't need to s dwell on that too much. Um, and this does the uh, groupings, and I'm gonna um, just change this to be, um, what did I decide, 100, I think? I just do one, yeah, if we just do like 100, I think that'll be fine. Um, I'll just comment out the rest so I don't have to remove it. But that, I think, should give us not too many benchmarks, um, but enough to be interesting. So I'm going to run this. So we're using Cargo Criterion. So that's a, a Cargo plugin. It runs the criterion benchmarker and we can say which set of benchmarks we want to run and i just want to run lexicase benchmarks and that's defined in my cargo toml um, you can define groups of benchmarks i have four groups of benchmarks defined here uh, one of which is lexicase benchmarks um, and that is this module here so that's basically going to limit me to just running uh, the benchmarks in this file. So we won't have to run through a whole bunch of other benchmarks as well. Um, so, boom, let's have that start. Oh, of course it has to compile some things because that's how these things always work. And I've got a couple unused variables, not important for our context. Um, that was for me playing different stuff um, okay finish building you can do it you can do it little computer and while this is grinding we might go look at um, uh, this William Weddell SCP 7000 thing um, so we can see here it's running so it ran simple lexicase uh, on random um, and lexicase with duplicate duplicate removal with random. I don't know why these are saying they've regressed so. Oh, you know, I, I do know why. Um, when I previously ran these, um, I wasn't running the Twitch streaming software that I'm using, and that's probably tying up a fair chunk of resources. And so, yeah. The things are slower doesn't super shock me um that's a little annoying oh you know what i forgot to actually ever put in any calls uh kill that uh to um our new thing well that's not helpful so we got a boom 
And so this is, what do I call it? I called it one pass lex case. Uh, one pass lex case. And this is gonna be one pass lex case. And that should take care of that. And then I have to do the same thing here. Uh, um, one pass lex case. And one pass lex case. Yeah, okay, that's kind of important. Otherwise, we were not going to get anywhere. So we'll have to re recompile that. If I'd actually let that go, which unfortunately would have taken a while, we would have um, maybe avoided the regression. Um, but one of the nice things that Criterion does is it saves the value from the last time you ran the benchmark and compares the current time to the last time as a way of sort of saying, in the changes that you la you've made since the last time, did you make anything worse? And here we're getting no performance, no change in performance detected, um, and actually a slight improvement here. That's probably just noise. Um, uh, but, um, I would have expected this. And I think that's because it saved the previous two values before I kill it. Um, at some point, we're going to run into things that it had not been able to do. And then I would expect we would see maybe more regression. I don't know for sure. Um, and one pass Lex case doesn't have an improved or not because it hadn't been run before. But we can see, aha, uh -huh, it is significantly faster. Um, so on a random population, one pass lexicase is over 10 times faster than lexicase with dupe removal, which is, and is, but is slower than simple X case. Well, that's interesting. Uh, it's like three times slower than simple X case. We did not make things faster, um, at least on a random population. Um, on a uniform population, one pass is 1.7 milliseconds and simple X case is 1.8 milliseconds. So it's maybe a hair faster, but that's probably not statistically significant. Um, so that's a good question, Alan8201. Um, which one do I think has the most room for improvement? Oops, not the right window. Um, well, I mean, in some sense, the slow ones, um, which are random, uh, so that in a, in a random population, everybody is different. Um, and so, uh, uniqueifying has zero effect. Um, oh, actually, th these are not both random. So this is a uh, simple X case on random, and this is uniqueifying with random. So I guess if we really focus on simple, since I use that as my starting point, um, this is simple uniform. Oh, actually, we can even um, simple X case. We can look at just simple X case. So uniform is way out here. It is much slower than everybody else. Um, random and even small amounts of structure, simple is quite a bit faster. But if um, the population is random, then essentially we have to go through uh, many, many cases because everybody's different before we've whittled the world down. Oh, sorry, uniform, uniform. In the case of uniform, everybody's the same. And so we basically have to go through all the test cases. Still find we still have everybody because everybody was just twins of each other. Uh, and then pick one from that. Um, and so that requires the most work for simple X case. 
Um, I guess 10 might have been an interesting option to include as well because that is also so the little ones so maybe 10 or 20 um as well as 100 which is the one i did include so maybe we should include 20. um so good question um let's include 20 as well um and let's rerun things and while that's grinding, let's also, because I'm curious, um, and probably vain, but um, so, uh, what was it? Uh, William Wettle SCP-7000? I don't even know what this is. What? Eek! That's a picture of me. This is I. This makes no sense. I don't have any idea what this is about. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. That seems weird. Um, so let's see, Zitsu is asking the question, how often are we appending to the VAC? Um, and that actually, I think your, your proposal is exactly what I'm going to do next, I think. Um, so, uh, right now, um, if we look at the code population. So this is a place where actually I think Rust does help us become clear about something. This statement here is basically saying, throw away the old vector and, re and construct a new vector. So we're allocating memory for a new vector here. And by assigning that, we're freeing up whatever memory winners used to point to because nobody else had access to that memory. Um, and so we're allocating and freeing, allocating and freeing a lot of memory. And we don't need to do that. Um, we can, ought to be able to just allocate once and reuse that allocated chunk of memory all the way through, which I think might be what Bill Lakava's C++ code is doing, but I honestly don't know. I need to look into that. Um, uh, but that's actually the next version of things. Um, so I figure we'll wait until this is done, which should be um, quite soon. And then we'll look at the results. There we go. Um, let's back up and reload. Um, what happens if we go here? Oh, does that just add everything? Yeah, it does. That's interesting and not super helpful because it'd be nice to have the other pieces not there. Um, and there's not, I mean, I can do... Well, I could just look at, so random, uh, I've got to reload. So simple exit case and one pass. So one pass on random, it's slightly slower, actually. Um, still considerably better than with dupe removal, but slightly slower than just simple. So, so far that didn't win anything. If we look at uniform, reload. Uh, one pass is again a slip, maybe a hair better than simple, maybe. Um, pro almost certainly not a statistically significant difference. Um, if we look at 20, um, one pass is worse than simple by a noticeable amount. And if we look at 100, 
one pass is still worse than simple. So one pass did not save the world. Um, that did not really do us any good at all. If anything, it made it worse. Well, that's exciting. Um, so then I think the thing to do is what, um, uh, is it too suggested? And is it too, why are you still up? You should be asleep. Um, I love your company, but really, I don't want you to be ill. Um, so I could, uh, yeah, let's actually just make a whole nother one. Um, obviously I won't, won't have to just want to pick one and get rid of the rest of this clutter, um, downstream. But, uh, for now, I'll go ahead and just pop another one in. Um, uh, uh, reuse vector lex case. So Izitsu's idea is essentially to avoid this. Don't make a new vector and um, overwrite uh, an old vector with a new vector. Can we make one vector up front that we can reuse all the way through? And that I think would be the nifty trick. So we're gonna say let winners be back and there is a, a with capacity constructor for vectors where we can say how what's what's the largest we expect we're not limited to it in fact we if we add more it'll just do the same memory allocation that it does normally but here in this case we know that winners can't have more than the population size or the size of candidates so we could say candidates.len here. And that allocates, let's say candidates got a thousand individuals. That is gonna allocate a thousand slots for references to individuals, because that's actually all we care about. Um, and we will never need more than that. And the idea then is to never allocate new memory but to just reuse this memory in part by moving the pointer back to the beginning. And there is a dot clear on VEC that basically does that, sort of moves the pointer back to the beginning, but doesn't actually empty any of the memory or cause any new allocation. So I, fingers crossed, hope that this is gonna be the, the happy thing. Um, so, we're going to get rid of this. Um, actually, we're going to say winners dot clear. Is that what it is? Clears the vector, removing all values. Um, and I don't really know quite what they mean by removing all values. I don't suspect they go through and like overwrite them. Um, they may change if they're owned by this, they probably can be freed and that has to happen. But um, I don't think we're probably like writing zeros into things. Um, so we're going to clear the winners and then we're going to um, go through the individuals and if, oh, we need to actually push because notice I had candidate zero in there. So we need to say winners dot push candidates zero um, in there. If we find somebody who's better, then Again, we'll want to clear and push C on. So winners.clear, winners.push C. And then, otherwise we just push C. And now candidates becomes winners. Um, No, that's not going to work, though. 
because we we're gonna have to copy why are you grumpy oh you still don't need what really type annota annotation needed for vec t oh interesting really i'm not sure i mean it seems like it can infer it well, what if i save aha that goes away but now we have other problems so i feel like this is getting us in trouble so by just assigning the candidates we are providing another name basically for this vector and that isn't gonna be good um uh so oh so this is all of most of that is is about mutability i think so we can't clear if it's not mutable um uh so what are we grumping about here borrow of move value yeah so we move it here so this after this assignment we no longer own this value we've given the ownership over to candidates and yet we when we come back to the top of the loop and this is actually pretty subtle rust is telling us that we move the value on line 273 which is down at the bottom where we have candidates gets winners and that um that then gets us in trouble when we come back up to here so this is um coming back around to the top then we try to clear and it's like whoa we don't own that memory anymore so this is a case where the compiler is actually being really quite clever um and giving us some you know very useful information about a, a potentially subtle way that we could have shot ourselves in the foot. Um, so we really need to copy the contents of this into here and then come back around again. Um, and we could again, um, make a new vector so we could do something where we basically clone this but we could also presumably reuse this memory um, in a similar fashion and just copy the pointers across not sure what i think would be best there um, i'm guessing if we're really trying to reduce memory allocation um th this is not the right answer um yeah let's try that see what that looks like and then i won't make a whole new one oh mem swap uh -huh. things to look up um rust mem swap swaps the values at two mutable locations without deinitializing either one that would be perfect for this good job um and then so we'll have to talk about the out declaring winners inside the loop in a second but let's actually um so we want to swap winners and candidates now do we really want I think yeah so if we swap winners and candidates winners gets the memory that candidates used to have but we won't allocate any new memory and we won't free any memory and candidates gets the memory winners used to have, which again will avoid freeing any memory. So I think this is actually the right thing. Oh, good job. Zitsu, you're awesome. Um, so, 
swap uh, candidates winners and we're grumpy start with this um, oh yes we need to say that they're both going to be mutable references so that it knows that it can do the swapping in these two so that looks really cool now Alan 8201 asked if we could declare winners inside the loop. Well, that's what I actually don't want to do. Yes, you could, but that would break Izitsu's idea, um, which I think is going to be actually a significant win. Um, if we allocate, so we need, we need this, both of these vectors, we need to, we want to allocate them once and only once. And we don't want to ever free them up. We just want to keep reusing the memory. Um, and if I allocated winners inside, yes, I just want to clear it, but I don't want to initialize it. Um, uh, if I allocated it inside, then I would have to reinitialize it. I would allocate memory for a new winners vector um, and then swapping wouldn't even work because we candidates would now point to memory. It would it would basically point to the winner's memory, and we'd come out of the loop, and that memory wouldn't exist anymore because it had gone out of scope, and candidates would blow up. I think there'd be I'm not sure I could say exactly what the error is, but I'm quite certain the compiler would be grumpy about that because we'd be referencing things that would go out of scope and would be problematic because candidates still needs to mean something down here so it can't point to memory that was allocated inside of this loop um so yeah i think that's the thing now the just clear it um is gonna happen like now candidates will be the old winners and winners if we don't do anything is going to be the old candidates and um, that's addressed here by clearing now that's a, that's a straight out bug you could totally make if you didn't have the clear there this would absolutely not work um, but since clear just takes us back to the beginning um, and doesn't cause us to make new stuff, um, it has no effect on the allocated capacity of the vector, uh, I think we'd be okay here. So we clear, and then we reuse that chunk of memory. Um, and so, fingers crossed, this will work. And that might be, he says, uh, substantially faster. Um, and so, I forget, did we... Oh, I guess we can tell by looking here. So we need to add reuse uh, vector lexicase to this guy. Wah, wah, wah. So, oops, that should be brought out come on copy paste because I'm lazy um, and reuse vector lexicase and yeah we do have to do something slightly different here so it's better to copy this guy Bom, 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 bom. Doop. And somehow I got you confused as well. So we need this to become. Oh, ah! Terrible, terrible. That becomes that becomes that. Okay. So I think that should be good. And let's rerun our benches. 
probably ought to just remove, well, no, I don't want to remove anybody um, because uh, uniqueifying is still faster um, in at least one of the cases. So I think leaving it in would be a good idea. Come on, go to the computer. Um, so one possible reason for some of these changes might be the fact that they're all going better. If it's a truly random population. The population itself could be um, skewed. Um, and it's a different random population every time. So it makes comparing from one run to the next um, a little dodgy. Um, and so maybe that's part of what's happening here is that um, the populations are different and have different properties uh and that's why things are weird so actually if we scroll back here um so this is reuse vector was 49 milliseconds microseconds i'm terrible about these kind of symbols yeah because that's milliseconds so this is a thousandth of that, which I think is microseconds. So 49 of those, which is half what one pass was, um, and slightly worse than simple, and substantially better than random. Now, what about uniform? Um, reuse vector is 1.1 milliseconds. One pass was 1.6, so it's a little better than that. It's a little better than simple, and it's a lot worse than dupe removal because uniform, everybody's the same. And so dupe removal totally cleans everybody's clock. But that's actually, in reality, a very unlikely scenario. So I'm not super worried about it. Um, uh, and then we're doing 20. So reuse vector is 79 microseconds. Oh, look, at it's much better than everybody else. So um, 79 versus 349 versus 92. So it's a little better than simple and better than everybody else. So I think we have improved things on simple somewhat. Um, and then we'll do 100 which is probably more realistic than 20. The idea of only having 20 distinct values in the population is pretty rare. That would be a pretty unlikely scenario. Um, so I think 100 is probably more reasonable. And that is actually slightly worse than simple. This is weird. I really thought we were going to get somewhere on this, and we seem to mostly be getting um, about the same as simple, in which case it's sort of like, well, so like if we go to 100 here, um, yeah, reuse vector and simple are about the same, but better than one pass. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, which is better than with dupe removal. Um, so we've gone to a lot of effort to be more or less back where we started. Huh. That's weird. Kind of annoying. I was really expecting this to be like, awesome, we're going to win prizes. And I don't know that we're winning prizes. Go to 20... Yeah, so reuse, probably not statistically significantly better than simple. It's a little better, but it's not 
I think, a lot better. Um, and but better than one pass. So one pass made it worse than simple. So have I? Did I do something dumb in my one pass? That why would that have made it worse? Um, I wonder if the allocation here, if the need to grow that vector over time is expensive. And if I were to change this to be winners, get back with capacity candidates.len and then push C on. Would that be better? I don't know. Let's run our benchmark and see. Um, Otherwise, I don't. And we could get into flame graph and stuff. Um, it's getting kind of late. I don't know if I want to mess with that. But um, to figure out what is being slow here. Um, You don't think what I just did is going to be any better. And I don't suspect it's going to be any better either, to be fair. Um, at least not a lot better. Because um, I assume, I don't know what the default capacity is when you make a new vector, but it's not going to be zero. It's going to be something. Um, and so I don't suspect we're going to see a lot of memory growth increments um, in the course of this. So it doesn't seem super likely that this is going to be an improvement. But I'm a little confused as to why this is worse than simple. Because I would have thought, I mean, maybe there's some compiler optimization that it's able to do um, that this breaks. Um, you know, famous last words of don't try to beat the compiler at optimizing things. Um, it's possible that the compiler just can do something cool with simple because we're using iterators and the functional approach um, that isn't working here. Oh, that raises a question though. Uh, in mine, bigger scores are better. Um, uh, <gasps> but I'm doing little I was following, no, I don't, oh, that may matter. That may matter. Will that matter? Actually, it probably shouldn't matter, to be fair. But I think you're right that if C is greater than, because in my stuff we're doing greater and not lesser, um, Oh, silly me. I don't expect that'll change anything much, but we'll find out. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's max by key here. Um, but it occurred to me that um, one thing I'd said earlier um, that I... Um, let's see, we're close to the end here. I'm going to go ahead and let this finish, and then we'll rerun with the greater than turn to a less than. Um, but I think what I want to do next, actually, since we got 20 minutes left, is instead of having a for loop, actually using reduce. And if, in fact, part of what's happening is that the compiler is able to do 
smart things with um, uh, with the iterators and the functional specific version of things, maybe switching to reduce will allow it to regain its optimization mojo and do something cool. Um, so let's see, we had changed, we had changed one pass. Um, oops, no, that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted this. So one pass lexicase did get better here, but it got worse there. Uh, so it probably didn't really change in a meaningful way. Um, if those are both pointing in different directions, I expect that whatever change happened probably didn't matter. So I'm going to start this again with um, the greater than turn to less than. And while that's running, let's, let's contemplate um, using reduce instead of um, a loop. So if we think about uh, Rust, iter, reduce, do, 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 do. Uh, I think we are here. And there's fold and there's reduce. Um, they differ in one takes an initial value and a closure and reduce doesn't take an initial value. So I think I want fold actually. Um, oh, no, actually. If uh, this is the same as fold, the first element being the initial, oh, oh, yeah, no, this is the thing. So this requires that the type that you're folding and the return type have to be the same. Um, and fold can have two types. Um, so here we've got, these have to have the same type, but fold, we are allowed to have two different types. And that's what we want because we're returning a vector, but the things we're processing are individual items in that vector. Uh, and so we're gonna need fold. So fold is gonna take an initial value and a accumulator function where the first argument to the accumulator function is the accumulated value and the second is the thing that we're dealing with. Okay, how are we doing over here? Um, so, some things got worse. Uh, certainly we did not like radically change the world by changing the less thans to greater thans. A lot of this is still the same. And we seem to be going up in some directions and down in others. So I don't think, well, these two both got better. And that's what we would have changed is one pass. But here one pass and reuse got worse. So I don't think those are telling us very much. That's my guess. So let's see if we can make um, full do a thing. Um, and, you know, Alan B201, you may be completely correct that the, uh, actually, I wanted to say the ghost of Don Knuth, but I don't know if he's still alive, um, off the top of my head. Um, uh, met him a few times, many years ago. Um, my best friend in high school was a grad student at Stanford, um, Oh, that's very cool. Um, and uh, Kenneth was his advisor. Um, 
so I got to meet Kenneth a few times um, because of that. Um, okay, so let's look at one pass. And here we want to really all of this is going to go away and candidates so, so I'm even make that go away candidates is going to be candidates dot fold oh do I have to iter before I can do that I probably do right Yeah, so I'm going to want to say candidates.iter.fold, and I'm going to we're going to start doing this so I don't completely lose track of the world. And fold took an initial value, which is going to be an empty vec. Uh, and or though we could do candidate zero and then just iterate over. So into, okay, remind me into iter, used it, but I don't, can a consuming vector that moves each value of the vector. The vector can't be affected. Oh, and that makes sense because we're going to, eat this, make a new vector and overwrite it. So into iter makes more sense there. So yeah, I agree with that. Um, and actually I'm gonna just leave this alone because we're doing candidates. Yeah, I'm just gonna say vec new. I think worrying about that. Um, oh, but we're gonna have to then special case that, aren't we? Bird. Uh, well, let's tr let's let's try it. Time to be brave. Vec bang candidates zero, and this is going to then be candidates one dot dot. Uh, and then this is going to be our closure that's going to take the winners ooh that would be kind of cool if that's true and I, I might be then be breaking that by having it loop over just candidates one dot dot maybe I actually really want that to be zero um, because I could imagine that that going to mess that up. Um, so we're going to have those guys. And oops, I forgot to do an open curly brace. Uh, open curly brace. Boom. Uh, and then we'll want to have dot collect. And if I say to do bang here, we might find out if we at least compile. Oh, that's not an iterator. Fold return. Oh, yeah, fold returns the vector. So I don't need to collect. What am I doing? So. <laughs> Yeah, well, use a skip one instead. Let me have a look at skip one. Bust, skip. Skips over n elements of an iterator. 
So we would, um, I would still have this, but this would be skip one here. And that breaks because into iter consumes this, and I don't have access to that anymore. Yeah, I was afraid that would that was going to happen. You know, can I just do something silly like let first candidate equals candidates zero, and do first candidate? Probably not. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, maybe it did. Hmm. I'm a little surprised that that I got away with that. Um, but uh, seems to be okay with that. So then we just have the same logic here. Um, so if individual dot uh, dot scores test case index greater than winners zero dot scores test case index then uh, we want to return so we need to return the new vector, which is just going to be winners dot push individual, and that doesn't return anything, right? Yeah. So then we would say we want to return winners. Well, actually, I bet I can do that. Just um, oh, but. Whoa, I stop it. Go away. Um, I can't just do that. I do need to reset it. Um, so we can try that and then push the individual on. Else if individual dot scores test case index equals winners zero dot scores test case index then we'll just push the individual on and then we'll return winners regardless and so that What do you mean? Oh, save. There we go. Whoa, much grumpiness. Oh, these are not mutable. Yeah. So I'm going to have to say this is mutable. Is that going to work? Oh, okay. Uh, so now. Actually, this would be a place where if we're reusing winners everywhere, because we never allocate a new one, I could allocate all the necessary memory once up front. Um, and... The mute winners equals back with capacity candidates dot length. Oh, come on. Ah, no, 
not you. And then winners dot push first candidate. And then I probably didn't even need the name now anymore. But I can just say candidate zero. And then get rid of this whole business. And then this becomes winners. And then candidates returns. And so now with this clear, we do allocate a new vector here. But we don't allocate any memory in here. Hmm. I don't know. Let's find out. So we're looking for changes to one pass lexicase when we run the benchmark. And fingers crossed something good will come of this. Please, 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 please. I don't know. Uh, and maybe I'm over stressing about the uh, memory allocation that that really isn't worth all the faffing about. Um, I don't really know. But we can hope that this will make a thing happen. Um, and I hope this isn't messing up the stream. We, spinning up all the fans and making my uh, poor little computer sad. So one pass lexicase did better on random, but we've seen jumps like this before that have gone all over the place. Um, and like we didn't even change the code here and this went, you know, was worse by 10%. Um, so I don't know that that really means something. Uh, and we didn't touch this and it got better by a bunch so that doesn't make any sense um And uniform, it's particularly weird to see it jump around because it's all copies of the same thing. So uh, it shouldn't change at all. Now, one pass lexicase got better again, so we have two changes in the same direction. Maybe that's before. I don't know. Um, let's look at 20 and 100 because I think those will be the most interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Come on, little computer. Go faster, go faster, go faster. Um, we were working on um, one pass lexicase. So if we come back over here, so we put the fold in one pass lexicase. So that's the one thing here that should have changed. So that's the one I'm sort of paying. Ooh. 60% of, so it's interesting. So far in all the cases, one pass Lexa case has gotten better. Um, but now notice that everybody else got better and we didn't change them, but they got better in small ways. So maybe, now here this one got worse. So it'll be interesting to see if one pass got better here. Um, And I'll, um, I will do a more complete um, version of the benchmarks uh, after this is all over. Uh, and I'll post the results on the Discord. I just shared an uh, uh, invitation link to the Discord. 
So one pass lexicase got 70% faster. So it did improve on every one of the uh, test cases. That's interesting. Um, so if we look at one pass lexicase, and let's reload to make sure. So it got, uh, I thought that was gonna show me versus past, but apparently not. Uh, let's look at, um, let's look at 20, Yeah, I will totally commit to these changes. All of this is in a branch um, at the moment. Let's see, do I have that even up? I don't know if I got that up. GitHub.com Rust GA. So this work is currently all in this implement, implement lexicase selection branch. Um, I'll put that link. And I will commit all of that after uh, we wrap up today um, and uh, then feel free to play, make suggestions, pull requests, magic. It'd be wonderful. Um, so, uh, so here, one pass is still slightly slower than reuse vector and simple, although I don't know for sure if I would say any of these are statistically significant. Um, and if we look at 100, which is probably a little more realistic, one pass is again still slightly slower than the other two. Uh, again, I'm not sure the, there are statistically significant differences there. Um, and if that if that holds, um, let's look at random just for fun. Yeah, doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, I mean, if that holds, then I would vote for simple because it's simple. Um, and it seems to perform as well or better than everybody else. Um, I, th I think the one other test it would be interesting to possibly do is maybe this is not great. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe that kind of messing things up in some fashion. Um, and oh, thanks for uh, following. Um, and, but if we don't do that, we're going to have this sort of, if winners is empty case that we have to check every time through. And that seems really irky. Um, I don't really like that very much. So, hmm. Well, it is four minutes after nine and, uh, we should wrap up. I know there are people here that ought to be sleeping. Um, instead of participating in this, in this fun and foolishness. Um, but thank you all so much, as always, for being here. It is super cool um, having folks and having the good discussion. I will, um, I will run the full benchmarks uh, and post those results on the Discord. Um, and then I will... Um, also commit these changes to that branch um, so that folks can have a look at that. Um, and if you see something, a better way to do this, uh, that would be totally amazing and wonderful. Um, so um, one thing, oh, actually, uh, uh, so if we look at all of the stuff here, um, these are with dupe removal. These are mostly without. Um, if we 
let's just look at simple. Um, so simple's times are running uh, in the 50, 30 microsecond, 25 microsecond. I mean, that's really fast. I did some timings in Clojure and I don't remember the exact numbers, but they were in milliseconds, not microseconds. And if you had a thousand individuals is going to give you something like 1600 selections per generation times 300 generations, which is a kind of common number that we've been using. I did the math and it looked like there was probably an hour and, and these runs will take a day sometimes. Um, but it looks like there was, you know, a half an hour to an hour of that was being spent just doing Lexicase selection. So if we can make Lexicase go faster, um, that would significantly win for people. Uh, so that's a cool thing. Um, it doesn't look like we're getting there in rust by fiddling around the edges. Um, uh, uh, it looks like simple is just, you know, doing the thing. Um, but, uh it's uh yeah it's interesting that simple and one pass and um actually hang on why is there uh oh reuse vector yes yeah, so reuse vector is in some cases like way out here um in other cases, it's right in there. So, okay, I should quit. Um, I can play with this all day. And I will commit the code and push it up um, in case you want to look at it. And I will do a longer run of results. And I'll share that on Discord. Um, and uh, feel free to share anything, questions, ideas, whatever, whatever. Um, since there's some new people here today, um, I'm streaming four times a week. Um, so Tuesday and Saturday morning, eight to 10, no, not eight, man, I don't get up that early. 10 to noon, CD, all this is CDT, um, working on a web app, uh, Rust plus U, Wasm, um, for archiving GitHub repos. Uh, so we'll return to that on Saturday morning. Um, I'm doing evolution computation Wednesdays, 7 to 9 p.m. Evolution and computation in Rust. Um, and then Saturday afternoon, 2 to 4, um, doing systems labs in Rust. So looking at um, what role Rust can or should play in our systems lab course by rewriting some of the labs in Rust and currently working on a program that talks to a server, gets a flood of UDP packets and has to order and assemble them into a collection of files in sort of a strange and slightly artificial in class-like way. Class-like as in for a course, not like, you know, um, for like a job class or something. Um, but a lot of data structure stuff and some interesting error handling questions have come up. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. If you want to come to any of that, we would love to see you. Other than that, I'm going to say good night to all of you wonderful people. I'll try to get all this stuff posted um, before I go to bed. And uh, thank you very much. And I hope to see some of you on Saturday. Talk to you later. Ciao.